First, let's begin with our top story. A scathing rebuke today in Strasbourg. Here, one by one, European politicians stood and launched a seemingly coordinated attack against Jeremy Hunt and his controversial comments. Now, while talking about Brexit negotiations, the UK's foreign secretary compared leaving the EU to escaping a Soviet-era prison. MEPs from former Eastern Bloc nations found that comparison particularly offensive. And they made that clear this morning. And now we experience a new level of um, populism when the foreign minister of Great Britain Hunt comparing the European Union with the Soviet Union. Previous time he was insulting his wife, but here he does something more, far more different. Please, Mr. Hunt, show us the gulag. He's insulting not us, but millions of ordinary citizens who have lived under Soviet rule for so long time. Please show us the Stasi system in your country. Colleagues, uh, let me share the criticism on the irresponsible leadership uh, in the United uh, Kingdom. Let he be reminded that the United Kingdom decided freely to join the European Union. But in his case, I have to tell you that that is not so abnormal, uh, Banfred. He, he has once uh, even confused Japan with uh, China. It also decided freely to hold a referendum on its membership, in which the citizens voted freely. Qualche differenza con l'Unione Sovietica c'è, visto che l'Unione Sovietica ha provocato anche milioni di morti. Non credo che l'Unione Europea abbia provocato milioni di morti. So Sikorsky is right, Mr. Hunt, you should apologize for what you said. That is in fact a point on which he has uh, to apologize. All right, so we heard over there, we heard from Udo Bullmann, Giver Hofstadt, Philip Lambert, Manfred Weber and of course Antonio Tajani. First, I'd like to go to you, Amaya. When we see something like that, it's almost like UK bashing. I mean, understandably, the comments really hit a nerve here. But that, that kind of show of coming together, bashing the UK, isn't this the kind of behavior that people in the UK might be saying, oh, well, look at that. It's probably better off that we're out. I think for them, it's more Brussels bashing. Like, if you listen to what they're saying, they were saying this morning, uh, there's a, a feeling of, of wariness, of, of these MEPs are nervous uh, about these, you know, these provocations that they feel are provocations from Jeremy Hunt, from Boris Johnson. And uh, uh, if you follow what they said, you know, you feel that there is, uh, they've reached a point when you can't, this was what you, you can't say this against the EU at some point. And also, I think Verhofstadt uh, said that you can't really take hostage uh, Brussels. I mean, you can't have a debate in Britain only bashing Brussels in some ways. It's, it's, um, and also what I'm, I think what is a bit hard for them is to hear Jeremy Hunt talking, um, about, you know, giving this criticism that I think is, is, is a real provocation because it sure. strikes a nerve when you compare the EU to the Soviet Union as something, it's very daring and it's, it's, you know, for a European citizen, it's, it's not a very and this nice kind memory. Of, yeah, and this kind of, you can say, shocking language yeah. and analogy. I mean, I put, I put this to you, Stephen. This is, this is a clearly provocation, and perhaps they're trying to stand out at the, uh, the uh, Conservative Party conference. But isn't this the kind of language that your, your former party might be kind of responsible for? You know, putting strong, provocative language out there. Uh, uh, absolutely, you're right in that the first sense. This is Jeremy setting out his stall to become the next leader of the Conservative Party. Because he's saying, now I am... But is leader. that acceptable, that kind of language? Well, let, let's see, this, this is politics. This is the way that you need to get a message down to the people that you know are going to vote. And, and, Regardless and we, we, of whether and we it's respect, offensive? With respect to when I was in UKIP, actually, that was one of the areas that we actually clamped down on. We actually tried to say that we're not part of the European Union, that is a Soviet Union. What we did say is that they have a kind of sometimes a vision of controlling countries which looked like the Soviet Union where you didn't allow countries to be totally free but we never went that far. So he's putting a real big message and Maya, Maya is right absolutely on this. You can have indignation, you can be upset but what Germany is attacking is not the European people, he's not attacking the European countries, He's attacking the institution of the European Union. And that is the massive divide between Britain and the rest of Europe. You see the European Union as Europe. Should, it, he, should he have probably chosen different language? I mean, this is just, you know, probably. That was a very risky reference yeah. to make. Very risky, I think. All it's right, also a very strong message. It's a very strong message you have to learn about democracy.
Because you either, if you carry on that way, you could be seen by people to be like that. And the European Union has always championed the idea of being free. But you forced a referendum in France, you forced a referendum again in Holland, and you made the, the Irish vote again to kind of join on a European constitution. So what we're saying is you don't allow democracy when you don't like it. Isn't that like those who are overridingly powerful, the elites telling us what to do? That is the kind of strong message that he's sending out. I mean, but you can oh, yeah. avoid a historical reference that has created devastating effects. Absolutely. When you talk about the Soviet Union, you talk about something, you know, people have memories, know what it means and what it meant. So it's a very risky thing way, to say to away Europeans. From the, from the argument, because people will start focusing on, on, on that reference. Absolutely. Indeed. But I've been here in this chamber when I've been a person that's advocated strong control of borders, making sure that terrorists are not in this country, which is exactly what the European Union is doing now. But two years ago, I would have been called a Nazi, I would have been called a xenophobe. So it's not like the European Union is not capable of using that language. If they don't want to use that language and don't want to have it, they shouldn't use it themselves. Now, speaking of using language, you know, to, to provoke and to, to, to get attention, let's say, Jeremy Hunt was one of them, but also we had a, a Boris Johnson, a Conservative Party conference. On the fringes of that, we had a speech that was at least eagerly anticipated as anything in the main event. That was from the UK's uh, former sec foreign secretary, poster boy of the Brexit referendum, Boris Johnson. Let's take a look at what he had to say about Brexit and the Prime Minister's checkers deal. It is a constitutional outrage. It's not taking back control, it's forfeiting control. And by the way, they know it in Brussels. Don't be fooled by the suggestion that the EU will ultimately reject these proposals. Because what they want above all is to demonstrate to any other country that might dream of following suit that you cannot leave the EU without suffering adverse political and economic consequences. And what the Chequers' proposals show is that the United Kingdom, for all its power and might and network of influences around the world, for all its venerable parliamentary history, was unable, ultimately, to take back control. Do not believe that we can somehow get it wrong now, bodge it now, and fix it later. Get out properly <laughs> in a year or that is a total fantasy. As clearly he's auditioning for something there. You were there at the speech. I yes. mean, what, 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 was, was, what was the reaction? Prime to Ministerial. That? Was Prime it? Prime Ministerial, without a doubt. We talked about Jeremy Hunt with cheap shots, in a way, towards that of the European Union. But here you had a man who has been in government and has clearly got a passion now to leave the European Union for Britain and understands how we can actually profit, not just ourselves as a nation but he's setting out a stance where he is prime ministerial. He did so in clear language to make sure that the people understood that we want to take control, but he didn't denigrate, he didn't upset. Yeah, but Theresa, Theresa May said, well. she called it a good show. A show is what she said it was. Well, you see, that's where we're getting back into British politics. Of course, every part of politics is a show. Sitting here on this, in the stage today, in the studio, it's a show. We're entertaining, but we're also providing good but information. But he has had an image of, you know, having faux pas, making gaffes. I mean, this is Boris Johnson, and all of a sudden you think that would just suddenly change his you image and become I, prime ministerial. I think ministerial. people don't understand the power of people like Boris to be able to reach out to the constituents where I grew up in the working class estates in the north of England, of people who were electricians and plumbers and workers hairdressers who are doing the jobs in the coffee shops and the restaurants to speak their language. That doesn't necessarily mean he could do the job, does it? I mean, okay, Maya, I would like to, to put you, to, to ask you this question. Uh, Bor if Boris Johnson as Prime Minister, how worried would Europe be, would the EU be? Oh, I think they would be very worried. I mean, if you listen to MEPs this morning at the plenary session, uh, whether it was Jeremy Hunt uh, stances or, or Boris Johnson, it's, you know, they put these people in the same basket at some point, you know. Uh, they think Boris Johnson is very provocative and even if people listen to what he says and clearly the internal British debate is now always sort of imported in the European Parliament. You, everybody talks about the, you know, the Tory conference and everybody's following very closely whatever British politicians say here. 
But I think, you know, as I said, whether it's Hunt or Johnson, this is a provocation and, and they will fight against this sort of Brussels bashing. And I, I don't think, I think he lost credibility here, to be honest with you. I, and if, if it were ever Boris Johnson, I mean, he already mentioned pushing back Brexit six months. No, I think what he did is he recognized that we've already got this two year time frame in place. That's already there. And he's now saying, look, Chequers is dead. We should chuck Chequers. And I agree with him wholeheartedly. It is not a deal that the European Union wants. It's not a deal that the Conservative Party or the Labour Party wants. And it's certainly not a deal what the members of the Conservatives or the public wants. So we should chuck Chequers and move on to a free trade arrangement, the Canada option that Barnier in this chamber actually talked to me about three weeks ago. Mm. So we've got that option. And he is basically setting out that, OK, we've got to start again, but we have this two-year time period. OK, very quickly. I think the extension of Article 50 is totally impossible. I mean, they right. said it very clearly, so... Yeah, I, I just like very quick uh, name. Next few, British Prime Minister. I think it'd be Boris Johnson. And uh, Maya? <laughs> Jeremy Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll leave it at that.